guys, welcome to my channel. I'm super excited you could join me today. For today's video, I will be showing a project that I made for the Jiggery Makery Design Team. And <clears throat> here it is right here. There we go. Now it is a mixed media project that I made featuring one of Adele's beautiful images. This is Jane. And although this looks like I made this on a piece of canvas, you will see once I turn it around, that is actually a wood block that my husband had cut for me. It's about, uh, I'd say about an inch and a quarter thick but this is what it looked like before I altered it to make my project. And so for today's video, I'm going to show you guys how I took this. Here's another one here. This is the one that we're going to be work, I'm going to be working on today. How I took this and turned it into this. It's pretty simple. It's just using a few uh, techniques some sprays, gesso, little stamping, and this up here, I don't know if you can see that. That is a resin piece that I made and I just kind of glued them together on the top just to give it a nice little decorative edge. And here is some embossing I did here with some, uh, some texture paste. These are some brads from my stash. So in this video, I will show you, I, I will definitely be putting this in my craft room. And here's the saying here. I really love the saying. I found this on Pinterest. It says, knowing when to walk away is wisdom. Being able to is courage. Walking away with your head held high is dignity. With that said, let's get started on our project today. So here's our wood block here. It measures five and three quarter by five and three quarter inches. And as I said before, it's about an inch and a quarter thick. So the first step to prepare our wood block is to use gesso. Now gesso is probably one of the best mediums that you can use if you're going to apply paints, sprays, you name it, this is, you always want to start off any of your projects, mixed media especially, with some type of gesso or even a multi-man medium. So here's the gesso that I have. This is, uh, Ar this is Artist Loft White Acrylic Gesso. And I think I got this from Hobby Lobby. And the best way to apply the gesso is to use a foam brush. So any foam brush that you have. So let me get my gesso open. And for this part, I'm just going to add one thin coat, let it dry, then another coat. And um, once we have that set, I will get out my, um, my distress paints and my glimmer mist sprays and show you how you can create this awesome background here. Okay, let's get started. So just sit back, relax. Um, this part will be, I will go through this part really quickly. I will fast forward this part of the video so you won't have to sit there and watch me go through painting this wood block. And here is our wood block, all primed and ready for our next step. And this is after two thin coats of the gesso. And I also did the sides on this one. So 
One more step before we add our paints will be this Ranger Multimedia Matte Gel. I'm just going to add a coat of this top of the wood block. Let, let it dry and then we'll start adding our paints and our mist. So meet me back here. Give my block time to dry. Now it has a layer of the matte medium on it. Now I can add my distress paints. Now for the sample piece that I made, which is right here, I use my distress paints in seedless preserves and weathered wood. And now for this one, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to switch the colors up a bit. <clears throat> I'm going to use my seedless preserves and my peeled paint, stress paint. Try to get my camera to focus. There we go. Now the only thing you're going to need other than your distress paints is a used baby wipe. Now all I'm going to do is just dab some of the color, well some of this, some of the seedless preserves on the outside. I'm going to use a different image for this. Now you can go as dark or as light as you want. kind of want to get the color in there first. And with the multi matte medium, you'll be able to move the paint around and uh, mix your paints. You can add it any way you want. I kind of have an idea that I'm working off of here um, for the image that I'm going to use. texture with the baby wipe. I'm just pouncing it on there. Lock right here. Now the distress paint has had time to dry. I'll bring it up close and see all the texture that I was able to achieve just by using the baby wipe and using the baby wipe to pounce the edges so that it'll soften it up a bit as you can see here. It doesn't leave like a harsh line which makes it look a lot better. Now the next step is to use some glimmer mist or any of your spray mist or shimmer mist that you might have in your craft desk. And this is from Tattered Angels and this is the color Craft. <clears throat> I was able to pick this up at my local Hobby Lobby and it was on clearance, if you can believe it. And I wish I would have bought more than one bottle because I absolutely love this stuff. I'm just going to spritz it. Spritz in my Glimmer Mist. I'm going to let it drip down a bit and use a napkin. kind of sop up a little extra from like the edges like right here not too much that gives it a very nice shimmer as you can see it looks pretty cool already now I'm just gonna set this aside let it dry <clears throat> and then we'll move on to our stenciling adding some texture to our background okay and here is our completed block. I also did the sides off camera using the 
matte medium, laying down a, a layer of the matte medium, and then adding my distress paints, and then using my glimmer mist to add a little bit of shimmer and to darken the color a little bit. And there we have it. Now the next step is to do our texture paste. Now I'm kind of straying away from this sample here, but you can pretty much see how I created that background here. Now I'm going to forego the resin piece that I put here on the top because I'm going to use a different image for this block. I have a different image in mind for this. So I don't have a sort of like a bullseye um, stencil. So what I'm going to do is that I use my nesting circles. And here's what I use right here. Let me try to zoom out a little bit so you guys can see. These are my nesting circles, and these are from Doris. And I use these to cut out these uh, circles here out of some white cardstock. And the pattern that I want to create is sort of like a bullseye. So I'm going to position it he up here. Because my images that I'm using for this particular block will go along the bottom here. Now I'm going to add a little bit of adhesive to kind of like hold it down so it doesn't shift while I'm adding my texture paste. And instead of having traditional texture paste, I actually am using some spackling. And this one works pretty well. It dries really quick so I don't have to wait too long in between. And my husband picked this up for me at our local Lowe's store. So I'm going to add the uh, texture paste, let it dry. Then I have another circle. I'll remove the bigger circle. And then I will leave the one in the middle there. And then I'm going to add a smaller circle that I had cut and position it there. Sort of create like a bullseye effect on the block itself. They are my circles. I'm going to add my texture paste. Make sure you have a spatula handy or even a uh, plastic butter knife will probably work for this as well if you don't have a palette knife. Excuse me. And um, when I come back I will show you what the next step will be in this process. Alright and here is our block. I added a chevron pattern as well using my spackle. And here is the little bullseye pattern here you saw in the beginning. I also did the sides as well. <clears throat> I did all this off camera so the video wouldn't run so long. Here's the top right here. And then using my <clears throat> Fabric Castell Pit Artist Pen, sorry, in black, I was able to draw these circles coming from the center all the way around and even on the sides as well, as you can see here. And then using this baby wipe that I have here, I go over the lines that I made, the circles here, you soften the lines a bit and make it fade out. I kept it pretty dark in the center as you can see there. Then I have it go gradually fading out from there. Then I made sure to draw some of those half circles on the sides and the top as well and fading them out using the baby wipe. I think it adds a really cool look to the block. Now the reason for this pattern here is because I'm going to be using this image. This is one of the newest images from the um, Scrap and Dippity shop. And here they are. This is Stevie and this is the White Rabbit of course. And this is uh, the set called Stevie in Wonderland. 
Now when I got this image, I thought it'd be cool to add them here, like they were going down the rabbit hole. I will have a video up later this week showing you how I colored these two images up. But I thought this would be pretty cool to put this on this wood block and give it like an Alice in Wonderland type theme and give it to my teenage daughter who is a huge Alice in Wonderland fan. <clears throat> so now I want to add some stamping to the wood block and I will be using this awesome set that I picked up in Hobby Lobby. It's from Prima. 28 piece cling mounted stamps. It uh, doesn't have a name but it has a lot of cool images. See, there's uh, clocks, there's bird cages, perfume bottles, there's also crowns, birds, insects. Uh, this uh, border pattern is really cool, has a few uh, phrases. <clears throat> and here's the item number right here 551056. And they have a few other sets. And this one I was able to pick up at Hobby Lobby. It was on clearance. And I couldn't pass it up. So so for uh, the images that I will be using the stamp on here, of course, is going to be uh, this big clock here. The smaller one up here. Let's see if you can see it. Ah, uh, right there. Smaller one there. And maybe this pocket watch as well probably stamp the uh, phrase right here it's time and the script the time flies as well <clears throat> so I'm gonna get these mounted block here and I will be using my stays on ink and I'm just gonna ink this up and just start stamping away Okay, and here is what the wood block looks like thus far. All of our stamping in there. I even stamped over the texture paste or the spackle that I used. Now here are the sides. Okay, here's the top here. Try to get the camera to focus. Sorry, guys. And here's the bottom here. Okay. Now I'm going <clears> to <throat> just place my images back on there. 
just to see if there's anything else they might need. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. I do have these, excuse me, um, these cloth pieces here. They're actually Brad's from Hobby Lobby that I picked up. And this is from their spare parts line. And I cut the prongs off the back of each of these. Now the color isn't right. Um, I'm going to see if it might, might work to add them onto the block just to give it a little more interest, I guess. But I definitely will have to color these up. Um, I did coat these with um, my uh, multi matte medium, my Ranger multi matte medium, so I can add any kind of paint or spray or ink, whatever I have. Okay, let me get my, might be good to use my alcohol ink for this just to kind of like dab it on. This color is really good. This uh, butterscotch color from Tim Holtz and Ranger. Might be good to age these pieces a bit. Um, but I'm going to get something to lay on my mat because I don't want the alcohol ink to stain my mat. So um, I'll be right back. Okay, so I have a piece of wax paper here on my mat. I have my clock pieces here as well. I'm going to try to bring it up close. Try to zoom in as much as I can. Let's turn this one over so it's facing the correct way. Okay. It's about as close as I can get it. I have my alcohol ink here. And I have a sponge. to let it cool off because these are metal pieces and with the heat tool they will get hot so when I come back we'll add them to our background add our images and then we'll be done here's what our clock pieces look like gave them a nice aged appearance definitely changed the color and it does have a little bit of shimmer which is what I like. Okay, now when we add it to our wood block, as you can see, it matches the background that much more. I think this arrangement right here would be a good one. When you're adding elements to your project, you always want to add them in threes. It's uh, more pleasing to the eye that way. Now these clock pieces do have a lip. I don't know if you can see that right here. Now one way you can fix that because it is a soft metal that they use. I'm going to use my multimedia scissors from Exacto. Cut around it. I 
Sorry guys, I'm doing this off camera because it makes it a lot easier for me to see what exactly what it is I'm doing. I'll show it to you in a second as soon as I'm done. Okay, there we go. Get the camera. To there we are. See, cut that lip off. So now when we add it to the wood block, it'll lay flat, and then you can also bend it over the side as well. So I'm gonna <clears throat> cut the lip off of the other two, and when I come back, we'll add them to the background. Okay, now that we have our pieces all cut, and do be careful, the edges might be a little sharp, but you can use a bit of sandpaper, I guess, to um, file it down a bit. I'm trying to see what would be the best adhesive to use for this. Um, no, I want this one here, so what I'm going to do is bend it over the lip a bit. See how it just how it holds it right there, and then you'll see it on the other side. Okay, see, because the metal is soft, so Ranger Multimedia Mat the gel. So on the back of this and see how that'll hold. And here are our clock pieces added on. And there it is, okay. And then you can see it from the side because I folded it over. There we go. And now, <clears throat> this is probably about the time where you kind of take a step back and look at your project to see if it is missing anything. Um, hmm. I think polka dots might be good. Let's let's get our images first, just to see. Cause I'm definitely gonna use pop dots for these. Camp will work right here. I'm not. This is probably older rubber stamp. Oh, here's the name right here design company and this is a stoneware texture rubber stamp not sure where I got this I think it was at a, a yard sale that I picked this up and we're gonna use our stays on ink start adding it. Oh yeah, it's definitely what it needed. You can even go over your clock pieces as well. I mean, I even go over some of the texture pieces as well. Okay, let me just show you, especially here along the top. Let me turn it this way so you can see. It's really adding that extra something that I think this background was missing.
and here's the close-up and I think I have a I think I might add a title as well I wasn't it's kind of debating on whether adding a title but I just might need it these are all lowercase letters and this is an ink and ink do set from Brenda Walton this is an older one and this is called Chelsea's Alphabet with the iconic I'm late title because that is definitely one of the uh, phrases the rabbit white rabbit says the most Yep, I think that'll work a lot better. Let me put my images back on here. Yep, that'll do it. Um, let me get my stamp block. Let's stamp this out. We have our title stamped. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the um, Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen in black and go over the letters just to deepen them up a bit and um, make them stand out from the background. go that dries a bit and then I will add a little white highlight with my pit artist pen in white let me bring it up close so you can see okay so our wood block is just about done I need to add excuse me some highlights to our phrase up here and I'm going to use the white one I need to shake it up a little bit first it's been a while since I've actually used it and I'm going to add a little highlight it really makes it pop when you add that little bit of white Okay, now the final step is to add our images. So when I come back, I'll show you the completed project. And here is our completed Alice in Wonderland mixed media project here. I added the images using some pop dots. Add a little bit of string and cut a slit in the rabbit's hand and add a little bit of gold string so that he can hold his pocket watch. And here is Stevie as Alice just looking at him in disbelief. And here's our completed background here. You see our clock pieces there, all of our stamping that we did, the texture paste. Here's the side view. It's the top. This is the side right here.
And then last but not least, our title. I'm late, which is fitting for this scene that we've created right here. And I think this is a piece that my daughter would love. I hope it's doing another one of these, but using the Mad Hatter image from the Scrap and Dippity Shop. So I will definitely leave links down in the description box to the Scrap and Dippity Shop where you can find these images. Well, that'll do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you learned a few tips and tricks, and I hope you give this project a try for yourself. Make sure to check all the links in the description box. And there will be more pictures up on my blog. So make sure to look for the link for that as well. And I will check you guys next time. Peace.